Presentation of our ordinances. Madam President. Leader Ryan. Motion to waive the reading of items nine and 10 on refer to the Committee on Finance. Second that, Madam President. The motion has been made and second to waive the readings of item nine and 10 and to refer to the Committee on Finance. I just wanna do a check for co-sponsor. I see Councilwoman Anthony has her, your hand is up. You wanna speak on that? Can I just check for co-sponsor first and then I'll come back to you? Mm -hmm. Great, perfect. Any additional co-sponsor for items nine and 10? Uh, Councilwoman Castillo? Any additional? Uh, Councilor Curran? Okay, with that, Councilwoman Anthony. Thank you so much, Council President. First, I'd like to speak on item nine. Um, I'd like to speak in support of amending our ordinance to create an independent Department of Sustainability. Right now, the city's ordinance establishes a director of sustainability, but not a department. This ordinance creates the Department of Sustainability so that the director will be like any other department head. The department will also have its own budget. The Department of Sustainability is charged with creating and promoting a healthy, low carbon and climate resilient future and, envir and an environmentally just city. This ordinance codif also codifies the city's energy goals, including being 100% carbon neutral by 2050. If Providence is to accomplish that goal and the other goals, we must engage every part of our economy and use every tool we have. We need a sustainability department with a budget to accomplish this task. As you know, Leah Bamberger, our director of sustainability, has worked closely with the Racial and Environmental Justice Committee, as well as many other stakeholders to create the city's climate justice plan, one of the first of its kind in the country. In Providence and around the world, people of color have contributed the least to the climate crisis, yet they are disproportionately burdened by the polluting industries that are causing climate change and other environmental degradation. They also are most exposed to the impacts of climate change like extreme heat and flooding. The department will use this plan to guide their very important work. So I would ask for your support of this particular ordinance. Would you like me to speak on the second ordinance, Council President? Sure. Okay. Sure, you can. And then after I see the hand for Councilman Goncalves, I'll go to you after. Okay, thank you. I'd also like you like to ask for your support of the enactment of a building energy reporting program. So this is going to be one of the tools, the most important tools we use to co co uh, combat climate change. Cities across the country are benchmarking energy usage because it results in real cost savings and helps us measure progress towards sustainability. Here in Providence, buildings account for over 70% of its greenhouse gas emissions. The city of Providence has been measuring its bench, has been benchmarking its energy uses um, and since 2010, and that has resulted in a great deal of savings, hundreds of thousands of dollars of savings for the city. This energy benchmarking ordinance will require owners of buildings in the city of Providence with 10,000 or more gross square feet to report their energy usage annual, annually using an Energy Star pro Portfolio Manager, which is the internet based tool developed and maintained by the US Environmental Protection Agency to track and assess the relative energy performances of buildings nationwide. The purpose of the program is to encourage energy efficiency, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, to enable more effective energy and climate protection planning, and to provide the public with information concerning the city's and others' energy consumption. This program will also help building owners take advantage of existing energy efficiency programs offered by National Grid as they are required by law. Um, and will help help National Grid also develop programs that will better match building owners' needs. Real sustainability will take the effort of every single one of us, and I ask you to enact this important legislation. 
Um, I also want to take this opportunity to thank the team at our Office of Sustainability, specifically Leah Bamberger, the director, as well as the members of the Environmental Sustainability Task Force and the Rachel and Environmental Committee for their hard work for a sustainable future for the City of Providence. And I also would thank you, Council President, for directing everyone to see the number of uh, attendees we have today that have attended in support of these two ordinances. Um, there has been a letter um, of sign on out for only two days. We have 200 signatures uh, in two days and we have important organizations in this field that are supporting these two ordinances, including the Audubon Society of Rhode Island, the Climate Action Rhode Island, NRDC, National Grid, Con Conservation Law Foundation, the Nature Conservancy, Truth Box Architects, Green Energy Consumers Alliance, Sierra Club, Institute for Market Transportation, Wanaska Tucket River Watershed Council, Clean Water Action, Handy Law, Armory Management Company, and the Acadia Center. So we have a lot of people that are in support of these very, very important ordinances, and I would like you to take that into consideration when we pass them at some point. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Anthony. Uh, next, I have Councilor, uh, Councilman Goncalf. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Councilwoman Anthony, for your remarks. The time to act on the climate crisis is right now, not yesterday, not in the future, but right now. And we've seen the devastating impacts of climate on our backyard, whether it's the Port of Providence or seeing some of the highest childhood asthma rates in our city that disproportionately impact our black and brown communities. We need to codify our Office of Sustainability. And I wanna thank Leah Bamberger, Emily Koo, the Environmental Sustainability Task Force, uh, the REJC, and everyone that's involved in this initiative so they can continue to do the vital work to protect our environment. The Building Energy Reporting Program Ordinance is a significant step in reducing greenhouse gas emissions in our city and also a significant step in tracking our energy consumption. And again, we need to act now and we need to act swiftly to ensure a clean, environmentally sustainable city and we can't wait. So these two pieces of legislation are a step in the right direction. And I wanna thank the sponsor, Councilwoman Anthony, for her hard work on these initiatives. And I'm proud to be a co-sponsor on these excellent pieces of legislation uh, to preserve the future of our planet and more, most importantly, uh, a climate resilient city uh, here in Providence. So thank you very much, Madam Chair, and thank you, Councilwoman Anthony, for spearheading these important initiatives. Thank you, Councilman. Next, I have Councilor uh, Miller uh, is going to be next. Thank you, Madam President. Um, yeah, I just I want to thank Councilor Anthony uh, for her leadership on this and the city partners and just briefly say, you know, we, we really often think about climate change as too big for uh, us to make an impact on or like too small, right? Like sorted into these personal choices of consumption, or it's a big national or international effort. But the reality is, right, like our city and our residents are feeling the impacts of climate change in numerous ways now. And there's this, you know, the, the buildings uh, make up a huge amount of our emissions. And so this major infrastructure piece of our city is, has a huge impact. And so uh, I'm really excited to have the discussion um, about these ordinances and just really, it, it's a way to really think about the way that Providence can have a very direct impact um, on quality of life and on climate. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, next, I have uh, Councilwoman LaFortune. Thank you, Council President. Um, I want to thank Councilwoman Anthony um, and Leah for all their hard work on this, um, and Councilwoman Miller, Gonzalez, um, and everyone else who's who's who sponsored this, and also all the groups that are in our city that are fighting for climate justice, that are fighting to create a more environmental resilient city. Um, Providence is a port town, and um, 
And we need to think about the impact of climate change in our city from um, rise in sea level to also the, um, the emission, the gas emission from our buildings. Um, we need to think about creating more green spaces so that the future generation can live in a clean city, can breathe clean air. We have parts of the city where there are high asthma rates um, that impact some of our most marginalized groups, my, my brother. Um, he was born um, with asthma and respiratory issues. And before the age of one years old, my brother would spend almost a month in the hospital, a hospital due to that. <laughs> we have to have these conversations. We have to work on these initiatives and we have to put the investment in it, which is why it's so important to have the environmental sustainability um, office within our city, because this has to be a priority. If it's not, we're not going to have a city for our young people to grow up in, for us to raise our families in, for people to invest in. So I'm just so happy um, um, and, 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 and um, thankful for all the hard work and those who have been fighting for this. And, um, and it's wonderful to see such a diverse group of people advocating, um, which shows us that this issue is important and it's um, and it's also critical that we work with our state legislators as well as our federal legislators to ensure that we get funding um, to support these types of initiatives because it's not just Providence alone, um, it's our whole state. Um, but we need support for this because we could talk about it all day long, but the dollars have to um, back um, these initiatives. So again, thank you. Thank you, Council President. Um, thank you to all the groups and um, hopefully we'll be moving towards a more um, resilient city. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, next, I have just want to check Councilman Gonkov. Do you wanted to add to your comment or just, okay. All right, then next I have Council, Councilman Espinal and then uh, Councilman Salvatore next. Okay, Councilman Espinal. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam President and members of the Providence City Council. I'll be brief uh, since uh, my colleagues and the sponsor, Councilwoman Anthony or the other co-sponsor have so eloquently uh, expressed uh, the reasons, all the good reasons as to why we need to support this ordinance. Uh, this is very special uh, to me uh, and I'm glad to be able to have the opportunity to co-sponsor as well since the Port of Providence is in my ward. And uh, as you know, Council President, uh, my ward has been hit hard uh, by environmental injustice for decades. And, and uh, this couple of ordinances here is definitely a step in the right direction. That This way here will uh, uh, begin to uh, line things up as to where they need to go and guiding us in becoming uh, carbon uh, neutral and measuring the usage of uh, energy by these uh, large buildings uh, and also in institutionalizing the Office of uh, Sustainability. So as a result, uh, we're gonna have a better city, a better and cleaner environment, a better and safer community. And it's something that from South Providence and Ward 10, we deeply appreciate everyone that has done work in this and, and all of your support uh, so again, from Ward 10, for myself, for my family, for all of us that live down here, uh, thank you so much for taking this step, which is so important to us. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Next is Councilman, S S I'm sorry, Councilman Salvatore. Thank you, Madam President. If there's no objection from the sponsor, uh, I would like to be noted as a co-sponsor on item number nine. No, it doesn't. Uh, Mr. Clark, you got that? I got it. Great, great. All right, so I just wanted to double check. I see that Councilman Espina, Councilwoman La Fortune, your hands are still raised. I just want to make sure you're all set. Okay, just checking. All right, so the motion has been made and second to send this item to the Committee on Finance. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Mr. Clark.